Now let's check out some of the methods that Python provides for us for working with lists. And let's create a list again of just integer values. And we'll go with what we had before, 4, 3, 2, 5, 6, 10, negative 12, 100, negative 17, and 43. We talked about the dir function. It tells us the attributes and the methods associated with its argument. And let's see what dir has to tell us about xlist, this list. And we get a whole lot of things. Let's check out a few of these methods. Perhaps we'll play with append, sort, extend, and count. First, let's see what help has to say about append. We could say, help, tell us what you know about xlist.append. And this tells us that if we write the list dot append and provide some object as the argument of append, then that object will be appended to the end of the list. Let's put this to the test and try appending something to xlist. So we could write xlist dot append and how about we give an argument of 111. Now it looks like nothing happened, but if we inspect the value of xlist, we see that 111 now appears at the end of the list. Let's try another value. Let's go with xlist.append and a value of 4. Now what is xlist? Well, there's a 4 at the start of the list and a 4 at the end of the list. And those are separate values. They're separate data. We could have objects that are equal to each other occurring in multiple locations within a list. Now let's check out the sort method. And first, what does help have to say about sort? And here things are a little bit cryptic. We see that there are a couple of optional arguments in here. They're assigned some value. And then we're told that this is a stable sort in place. And in place is kind of shouting out at us. Well, what does that mean? Let's try it and see. So let's just write xlist again so we see what it is. And now let's go with xlist.sort. We won't give any argument. Hitting return, it looks like nothing happened. But let's check out xlist now. And hey, everything is sorted in order from the smallest integer to the largest. So when help said this was a sort in place, this sort function didn't return a new list. It took the existing x list and just sorted the values within that list. Now, does this sorting work with strings too? Let's give it a try. Let's create a new list. We'll call it y list. And its first element is the string a. The second one is b. The third one is c, s-e-a. And let's go with the fourth one of d. And now let's try sorting it. So y list, go sort yourself. And what is y list now? We have a, b, d, and c with an s as the last element. So sure enough, it got sorted. It works with strings as well. But let's go back and use that append method. So let's take y list and append to it maybe the string cat. And one more. Let's go with appending the string zebra with a capital Z. Now, what does y list look like? Well, we have what we had before, a, b, d, c, then cat, then zebra. The fact that we sorted this list once, it doesn't stay sorted if we modify it. So if we modify it in some way, that modification won't maintain the sort. It may break the sort, but we can resort things. So let's say y list, go and sort yourself again. And now, what is y list? Well, it's kind of strange. Zebra is the first element of the list. And then we get a, b, cat, d, and c with an s. But in Python, as with most other computer languages, all the capital letters, when it comes to sorting, come before the lowercase letters. So this is correct. If we wanted to do a case-insensitive sort, we'd have to do a bit more work. 
but we won't demonstrate here how that's done. Also, if we had an inhomogeneous list where we had maybe a mix of integers and strings, Python's sort method would fail if it saw that inhomogeneous list. It just wouldn't know how to sort them. Again, we could do some additional work to say how we want those inhomogeneous elements to be sorted, but we won't get into that here. If we want to take all the elements from one list and append them to another list, we can use the extend method. So here's an example of that. Let's say xList. We want to extend your contents by taking the elements from the list consisting of the elements 99, 999, 9,999. When we hit return, xList now has those elements taken from that list inserted at the end of it. And recall in the previous video we used the plus sign to concatenate two lists. And that actually created a new list, whereas here we are modifying the contents of xList. Let's extend the list with a few more values. Let's say xList we want you extended with the elements four, maybe five, 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 and minus twelve. Now, what is x list? There it is. At this point, the list is so long that last element of minus twelve gets wrapped around so that the minus one appears on one line and the two is on the next, but that is minus twelve. Now let's use the count method, but let's see what help has to say about it. So xList.count, the count method, what can help tell us? And this says that it returns an integer number of occurrences of the particular value that's given as an argument to count. Let's give it a try. xList count the number of occurrences of minus 12. How many times is that in you? And it's there twice. How about xList how many times does 5 occur within you? And we appended three fives with that extend call, but there was one there already. So now there are four. How about xList count the number of occurrences of the integer 123? And it turns out there are zero of those in xList. And we'll leave our exploration of methods at that. And in the next video, we'll discuss a programming construct known as a for loop that allows us to work with each element of a list one at a time.